G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and you're watching an animation tutorial in which we're going to be working on animating this character here who happens to be an avatar of yours truly and we're going to be making him talk and move. So uh, a couple of the things that we're going to be going through is creating a face ready for lip syncing. We're going to be using a tool called Keyframe Caddy to make life really easy and then we're going to be uh, animating him moving and expressing from there. So we're going to go step by step. So the first thing that we have to work with is this figure here. Now I wanted to start as basic as possible. So what we have on these three layers, on the bottom layer we have a drawing of his body. It's nothing fancy, I'll zoom in 300% here. So it's just the one flat image, no symbols or anything. Next layer is a drawing of his head without any features. So just the, the basic head and then on the layer on top of that are his features. So his beard, his mouth, his eyebrows and eyes basically anything that would give him expression. So we're going to be using this as a base to create our animation from. The first thing I'm going to show you is the audio which we're going to animate him talking to. Now we're going to be creating the post roll animation which I'm going to be putting at the end of all my video tutorials from now on which sounds a little something like this. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking. You get the idea. So. The first thing I want to do, and we have no uh, other items in the library aside from that voice clip, uh, we're going to make this whole animation in one movie clip. Uh, reason being, like I don't want to extend the main time timeline on this whole thing, I'd just rather have it all embedded in the one character. So what I would like to do is select this head, hide the features and the body, and we're just going to work with the head for now. And I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is create it ready to do uh, the shapes and vowels and consonants with. So we're going to be making the mouth. Now, before we do this, you need to know that I'm going to be using a program called Keyframe Caddy. I've done a tutorial on using this, uh, so make sure to check out my channel and find the lip syncing tutorial. But we're going to go into this again. I'm going to select this, hit F8, convert it to a graphic, and I'm going to call this head base and hit enter. Now when I go inside this graphic symbol, I've just got what I just created. All right. And I'm going to, on several frames, make shapes of the mouth, right? So uh, thing like things like if I was to do, draw a sketch on each frame, and I think I might do this because it might make it nice and simple. The first one, will be a simple closed mouth smile. Whoops, I don't want an object. There we go. Closed mouth smile. Next one will be slightly open. Next, even more open. I'll turn on onion skin so I can see the frame before to keep things consistent. Okay, so we have the mouth opening up. Then we're gonna open nice and wide. Oops. Then start to, in the next one, start to go into an O shape and then bring it in like this until it's going OO. Okay, so you'll notice it's almost like making a frame by frame animation of the mouth talking. Now, this is really cool because later on, uh, rather than frame by frame animating him talking, we can just go back and use these frames in Keyframe Caddy. Uh, so, I'm going to finish off doing these vowel shapes. Okay, so we've got the uh, opening the mouth, the ooze. I want uh, the mouth going into a smile. So wait, that was our, this will be our open mouth. Okay, this will be our closing mouth. We need teeth now. So we're gonna have an open mouth, but this will have teeth. So we'll do another frame like that, but wider. And show the teeth line. And we'll do another one with it a bit more open, but uh, closing off. And I'll lock that bottom frame, bring in like that. Okay, so we have a few, uh, bunch of frames here. We just need to make sure that we have every vowel and consonant covered. Okay, so we have T. Now, and uh, I'm gonna do, do two L shapes. So I want one that's a bit more closed off. And it's gonna have the teeth on the top and the tongue on the bottom. And another one that's a bit bigger. So opened like that with the tongue much higher like that. Okay. The next one we're going to do is going to be an F. So a, a nice 
uh, one where the top layer of teeth are biting into the lower lip and do another one of that so it'll be more open okay now you don't uh, I don't always do this many but in situations where I'd like it to look more fluid and look more matched to the audio I like to have more options so in doing that I do that in this base layer here in the base movie uh, graphic Okay, so we have the mouth opening, closing, teeth, L, F, and the last one I want to do, I'll probably do at the start actually, I'll do it after this one, and I just want to do it, the, the mouth a bit more closed off, so if I want to use B or things like that, I just want to make sure I have everything, so, uh, V, T, T, yep, alright, so the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to speed this up so you don't get bored through the whole process but uh, I'll do the first one at a normal speed so you can see how I work so I'm going to lock this top layer and onion skin it so I see it as a reference but nothing more because I don't want to get um, in the way so the next thing I'm going to do is draw the real version of this mouth so it's closed off like this I'll have it on a layer above the bottom of the mouth okay and I'll add my dimple for good measure yeah I have dimples lucky me <laughs> okay cool so next thing I want to do is if I hit next frame and I go to uh, rather than doing the next uh, actually I might as well just do that one yep I'll just quickly do this one too easy all right so what I want to do next is, as I'm created a new keyframe, and I'm going to do the mouth opening up a bit, so I'll draw this mouth, opening up a bit. Okay, so I've drawn that mouth, but one thing that you'll notice is as the mouth opens, the jaw stays the same. Now this is a mistake a lot of people make. Um, when animating and, and lip syncing a character, you really want the face to move with the, the vowels and the, the talking because that way it looks much more realistic, much more fluid. So what I like to do is divide the head into two parts. One that stays consistent, which is the top part of the head, the hair and the ears and all that stuff. So I'll just make a new keyframe here and I'm going to copy that keyframe above it and hide the bottom one and I'll create my consistent layer. So if I hide everything except for the base of the head and select with my lasso everything around here and delete it and I can also delete those colors that is the part of the head that's going to stay completely consistent now if I onion skin and lock that and, un and show the frame underneath I'm going to erase everything except for the jawline here oops I'll make it a bit straighter like that so I want it to underlap a bit so that we have a bit of room for breathing I'll hide that top layer and I'll make sure that the color of this is consistent so that there's no nose showing through. And I'll get rid of the ear and that is done. So what that's done is pretty simply made two layers, one with the jaw, which I can move around, and one with this part of the head, which is going to stay completely consistent. So I can lock that and now if I show the mouth that I just created, I can grab this jaw, drag it down a tiny bit, and that way, when I move back and forth between these frames, you notice that the jaw moves up and down with the mouth. Lovely. So now, as I create the, the, create the mouths, I can make the jaw move consistently with it. Now I'm gonna go through and create all of these mouths and speed it up for you so you can see the end of the process. Now, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the video recording of the webcam and me talking for a large portion of this video was lost. Uh, so I discovered the problem later on, so I come back later on in the video, but for the next uh, large-ish portion of the vi video tutorial, I'll just kind of do this voiceover thing and explain what I'm doing as you can see me do it.
as you can see, I just finished uh, doing the mouth shapes and making sure that the jaw is uh, in line with him opening and closing his mouth and uh, I'm adding the beard now. Um, in doing this in a graphic symbol and then going out of the graphic symbol and using keyframe caddy allows the thumbnails to load in the panel that you can see on the bottom right there and uh, you'll see that happen soon but what I'm going to be doing for the next while is doing that for other parts of the character's face so I'm going to be doing that for the whites of the eyes, the eyebrows and, uh, and you'll see that that will allow uh, expression to be quite easy so you can see them loaded on the right there uh, that happened when I clicked the head and loaded thumbnails now I'm separating parts of the face into graphic symbols to do the same thing so I've gone in the eyes and created duplicates of the whites of the eyes and I go through and create versions of the eyes with the eyelids slightly closed in various forms which I might use in the animation and uh, do the same sort of thing with the eyebrows see that uh, as I'm mucking around with it there I can create an expression with keyframe caddy in uh, using the graphic symbols and then going outside with the head in in one main graphic symbol can move the whole thing together so what I've done now is I've extended the timeline in a movie clip with the head on its own layer and I'm going through and adding lip syncing shapes to the audio so I've extended the timeline to make sure that the audio fits the whole frame the, the whole timeline and I'm going through and matching the syllables of the mouth to the audio and making sure that it plays right. So there's a lot of going back and forth and doing that. Now, make sure that when you do this, you remember to turn the audio on the frame, uh, in, loaded in the timeline, to stream and not to event. Because if it's event, it's just going to play all the way till it's finished and it's going to be impossible to lip sync to. So stream allows you to scrub across the timeline and hear the audio as you play segments of it and match the mouth. Now, I do uh, notice in general that it's important to have the mouth moving slightly before the audio. I think that's, that might be because a slight bit of lag or something like that, but in the end it looks a, a lot smoother if everything's just a little, little bit early. After completely animating the mouth to the uh, to the audio, I go through and refine it, just make sure it fits right. And the next thing I do is I animate the expressions of the face. So ignoring the pupils, the uh, eyeballs or whatever you call them, I, uh, I go through and I alter the eyebrows and the whites of the eyes with the eyelids uh, to make sure that uh, the expression matches what he's saying. So if things just kind of go low in pitch, I tend to have the eyebrows a bit lower or, you know, when he's expressing and higher and that kind of thing, you know, cocky, having one eyebrow cocked up to the side. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. I wish I didn't lose the uh, the footage of me explaining it in person because it would be a lot, a, a lot more simple for you to understand. So I'll make sure to do a more uh, simple and focused tutorial based on this sort of thing in the future. But uh, I, I still wanted to keep this video anyway because uh, it goes through from start to finish in the process. And I suppose it, it, it's somewhat informative even though it goes through pretty fast. So you can kind of see how it works. So what I'm doing now is uh, after I've done the expression of the eyes and eyebrows, I go through and grab the eyeballs and make sure it moves in directions. My general tip is to keep movements short and sharp. You don't want the eyeballs moving from one place to another really slow. In general, we kind of flick our attention from place to place. So just make sure to keep that in mind. Now that the face is completely animated, I'm setting the stage up ready to create a movie clip. So uh, I create the movie clip and now on, um, on various layers, I take the draft of my body and use that as a reference 
layer. So I, I set it as a, a reference and uh, draw out the separate parts of the body. And I set that up in the same way that I did for the parts of the face. So as with the face, how I had the, the base of the face ready for keyframe caddy as a graphic with frames in between. And then same with the eyebrows and the whites of the eyes. I do the same with the body. So on one layer, I have the torso as a graphic. On another, the legs as a graphic. As you can see, I'm drawing them there and I turn them into a graphic. Then at the back, I have the back arm. And then at the front, I have a front arm. Now with these things on four separate layers as graphics, I can then go into them and add the uh, extra frames and then use them in keyframe caddy. Doing this allows me to essentially do frame by frame animation, but recycle frames that I've drawn. So it's like a mix of tween and frame by frame animation, which I tend to really like because it's the best of both worlds. Tweens look really smooth and frame by frame gives versatility. So as you can see here, I'm drawing another frame, which I know I'd like to use. And, and the good thing about it is uh, as I go through, if I decide I want another arm pose, I can simply just go in, add another frame to the, graph to the end of the graphic and then go back outside and use it in keyframe caddy. So I'm going through here and adding a, a few frames that I, I think I'll be using immediately. Um, to each of the graphics and uh, then I'm going to be animating him jumping down and landing. And so the cool thing is the face still animates out completely normally um, because the, the graphic of it is playing out on the main timeline. So in, in conjunction with that, using the keyframe caddy with the, the legs, the torso and the arms, it's like frame by frame animation mixed with tween, tween animation in a really fairly smooth way like you'll see basically as it happens so I've got the different poses of the jump drawn out with the legs and next I'll be going out to the main frame the main timeline of the movie clip and uh, animating it in keyframes and tweening between them So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward looking process that uh, I alter the positions of the graphics, use keyframe caddy in between, between those positions and between the, the keyframe caddy frames. And it creates a, a really smooth transition sort of effect. Um, like I said, it's that hybrid between frame by frame and tween animation. I think uh, my favorite part about the whole thing is the fact that the head is completely animated and that it's just a matter of pretty much just twining it from place to place. Um, I don't change frames of, of the head throughout the entire rest of this animation because I've completely animated it. Now, in some cases, I would do other angles of the head doing the talking, but uh, I just wanted to keep this one pretty much straightforward, so I just left it as it was with one angle. Make sure to keep in mind that uh, when his eyes go to a certain direction to have the head turn to that direction and even the body face that direction as well. So for when he first lands, he's looking off to the side, having him lean in that direction. And when he stands up, he's looking in the direction in which he's standing. So when he's looking up and pointing up, his whole body and face is turning up to where his eyes are pointing. You want to make sure to use direction like that pretty clearly to uh, communicate what the character's doing. Otherwise, it can be a bit jarring. It's, it's more of a subconscious thing, but you know, if they're kind of 
looking all over the place and then everywhere they're focusing their attention is is different with every part of their body you don't want to confuse people like that you want to make sure it's very clear cartoons are supposed to be pretty clear in how they're communicating what's happening What I've done there, as you can see, is uh, I just drew two new frames of the hand and it looked like I was drawing new frames of the hand specifically for that in frame by frame, but it was instead inside the graphic. So those two frames of the hand that I drew for that particular moment, I can now through Keyframe Caddy go back and use in any other situation. Just a little note here, as he throws the files away, I do one of the frames where I just super stretch the, uh, the symbol of the f file image. Um, and that, just for that single, I think it was one or two frames, um, adds a real sense of motion. So you can see here, I just add that really big stretch. Um, it's pretty much gone now because it's so sped up, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. Just having like one or two frames to completely stretch an object in motion can really clearly communicate that uh, something's moving fast in that direction. It's important to make sure that the character is is doing something. Uh, it's tricky when in a situation like this where the whole clip is him talking, uh, you could, or you know, it's very tempting and you know, uh, I suppose natural to just animate them talking. But you really want to make sure that they're doing something because at the end of the day, people are watching it and they're, they're expecting entertainment. So you want to make sure that if they're going to do a motion, do it a fairly extreme motion. So. For in instance, in this example, he's, he's going to be moving his arms to uh, make way for the word new grounds to be spelt in front of him. And rather than just kind of moving his hands or even just saying it, I, I lean, leaned his whole body forward and bring his arms around so that he can stretch all the way across in front of him and, and you know, add a bit of drama to the situation so that, you know, it, it keeps people watching, keeps people interested, something, you know, to look at.
not long from now that uh, I think I paused or stopped the recording to, you know, grab some food or a drink or something and, and realised that the uh, half of the <laughs> recorded data was corrupt. Luckily, the capturing of the actual um, animating process was saved, but, you know, it's around now that the uh, webcam will come back, so I'll see you in real time. All right, we've come a long way. I've completely finished animating the character animation, so I'll show you that now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation, or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later. Okay, so I am like really happy with that, to be honest. So. Uh, I only have two little things left to do. Um, I'm going to animate frame by frame smoke coming out as he lands. So like a big dust poof. Um, and I'm going to be writing up newgrounds.com as he moves his hand across. Now, my camera's been playing up and I will have overlaid what is missing with uh, recorded audio. But for now, this is a new take just so I can explain what I'm doing. I'm not going to go through and describe the frame by frame process. Hopefully you'll be able to just watch it and kind of understand what I'm doing. Um, I could do future tutorials on it, but for now I'm just going to finish this animation and uh, and hopefully you've, you've uh, gathered from the process how I go about animating things. Just to break it down before I get back to animating and finishing it off, um, the head when I enter it here, is its own graphic. It has its layers with keyframe caddy ready uh, graphics inside themselves with all of the frames needed for the animation of the face, which is used in the context of the main full body clip uh, animated as a whole so I can rotate it and move it and all that stuff as you saw me do, uh, along with other keyframe caddy ready objects such as the torso, arms and legs. I also added a shadow there at the bottom. So I hope you learned uh, a lot about character animation today. This is just a, a nice simple uh, way to go about it, especially for beginners. So make sure to check it out and enjoy the process.
All right, I'm completely finished. Now that I'm done, uh, you can check out the final animation. Make sure to uh, check out the reference file, if, well, as you've heard many times, um, to, uh, yeah, to check it out yourself if you have Flash. Otherwise, here is the finished product. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.